Hey, in this video, I'm going to go over with you the top five things that have helped me over the last several months to begin living my future self right now. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Brandon. I used to be an electrical engineer before I was kicked out of the rat race to become a full-time real estate investor and broker. And I have flipped with my wife over 150 homes. We purchased a dilapidated barn for $30,000 and later sold it for a multiple six-figure profit as a barn wedding venue. And most recently have renovated a dilapidated warehouse into a climate-controlled self-storage facility. Uh, my wife and I have four children and I love personal development and learning how to make great habits and break life destroying ones. Please join me on my journey and let's help support one another. But for today, let's go ahead and we're gonna get right into it. So this is day number two of my 30 day challenge to myself on creating some videos on a variety of topics. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the top five things that have helped me over the last several months to begin to live my future self right now. And a perfect place to start with number one, is to talk about the book future self now by benjamin hardy and i'll be doing a, a video review on that here over the next several months but for right now it's just important for you to know that that book it's it's a very uh it's a great resource for being able to start to reprogram your brain on where you need to go if you want to take actionable steps to move forward the second thing, number two, is my future self rocks planner. And I used to go about my day where it would be very haphazard and I wouldn't pre plan everything out. And I would arrive at my day and I would look around and I'd be like, okay, so what do I got to do? And, I, and of course, like I know the certain couple priority things that I would need to take care of every single day. But it wasn't until I began to be more, th more methodical about uh, looking at my, not only my year, but each quarter and then from one quarter to a week and a day. And we, we uh, I, actually within our brokerage, I have uh, a, uh, one or two people who were kind of going through it with me. I created what I call the future self rocks planner and what the rocks are. Uh, what I mean by that is it's the big priorities in your life that you need to make sure that you're trying to uh, focus on and take care of. Um, it, it, I'm not sure if you've ever seen the example where, and by the way, sorry about my hair. I just got done with a workout and it was a great workout and it felt really good. We'll get into that here very shortly. But so the, uh, the example of the rocks, like if you take, uh, if you take a bunch of sand, put it into a jar and then you put pebbles into it and then you put the large rocks into it, you're not going to fit the large rocks into it that you really want to be able to focus on. So you need to be able to sit down and ask yourself, what are the big rocks in your life? And you need to be able to evaluate this on a regular basis. I like quarterly, but once you figure out what those rocks are that you want to focus on for the quarter, you put those in your jar, then you start adding the pebbles around it, and then you pour the sand in. And before you know it, you're able to fit everything in that you want to while you're accomplishing the rocks, the most important things in your life. And far too many of us, I, I feel we get so stuck on putting the sand into the jar that we never get a chance to put the rocks in. And it's unfortunate. And it's what leads to a lot of the, the struggles that we face on a daily basis. So number one, the book, Future Self Now by Ben Hardy. Number two, the Future Self Rocks Planner, which again, I'm gonna be talking about that. Uh, I hope to have it actually available for sale here in the very near future uh, on my website. And you, you, you don't have to buy it, but it, it's definitely been something that's helped me to be able to, uh, and, and th th that way then I don't have to keep ordering an expensive binder online. I literally just go back and I reprint uh, as I need the sheets off of it uh, every so many, uh, usually like once a quarter, I'll print them off. So that was number two, the planner. Number three is my morning routine has really gotten locked in. And that probably started again with a book called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. I'll, I'll put a link to that book as well in the, in, the, in the show notes or description. But that book, uh, and I have to say, I don't follow it exactly how he lays out. But what I have done is I've been able to uh, really focus my morning on being able to fit a lot of the priority things. And as a matter of fact, I would say that most days and, and over the last, I'd say probably three weeks, I've been able to lose about 10 pounds, which it's nothing crazy, but it's better than where I was at. And, and I'll get into that here in a little bit, but my morning route. So I, I've been doing the Future Self Rocks Planner for some time, but I just haven't been able to take it to the next level. And then I was able to really start to get my morning routine locked in. Once I had my morning routine locked in, 
then I was, I felt like I was able to add this, this last final component uh, where I'm able to really hone in on my diet and exercise and just kind of tweak those habits that I was starting and establishing a little bit better. But the truth of the matter is, is before 630, most weekdays, I've already, I probably done more than most people are going to physically do all day long, even if they go to their job and they're up on their feet all day. Um, uh, for, for example, this morning I ran five miles, uh, did it in about 51 or 52 minutes and it felt great. It was really solid. And there, and there was, uh, some weeks, I think two or three weeks ago, I ran four miles, three days that week. And then, uh, and then I mixed in, uh, weightlifting on the other three days. And I just have a really good mix of things going right now. Uh, and I, and, and the cool thing is, is I've been keeping it very simple. I'm not complicating anything. Uh, it's very, uh, a very simple, uh, process and it's, and it's made all the difference in the world. So anyway, number three, a good morning routine. Okay. Number four, and this is going to be kind of tying into the health part of it that I was talking about. I, I kind of created a little acronym, uh, for myself. I call it one diff. There might be somebody who already does one diff I, or is promoting it. I don't know. But for me, one, one diff is I try to exercise at one hour every day. Uh, again, I'm going to mix in weightlifting on some of those days and other days I'm going to mix in cardio, um, but one hour per day, the D stands for diet. I, I'm not saying I'm completely clean and that I'm eating vegetarian and that I'm not eating junk food, but I would say that for the most part, I've really cleaned up a lot of my diet, uh, both eating, drinking, caloric consumption. I've really been focusing on, uh, my ha having a, a negative net calories, both in, uh, exercise, uh, could basically outputting more, uh, activity and then less consumption on, on the eating and drinking of calories. So that has helped a lot as well. Um, so I have one hour per day, my diet, I, I'm being a little more focused on it. Um, and then the IF is intermittent fasting. And I know it's nothing, uh, you know, earth shattering on that front, but I, I've looked into a couple different things. I have a friend right now who's doing uh, one meal a day. For me, I, I don't find that enjoyable. I, I enjoy to eat, uh, but I also think that I don't want to feel famished and starving. And and uh, I know that that's kind of how he's been feeling on some, actually last evening he was, he was starving. He had gone I, probably like 26 hours without eating. And for me, what I've really tried to do, um, I guess it kind of falls under the two meals a day. It, uh, TUMAD is a common acronym that people are going to call it. But I'd say I really try to hold off on eating anything until 11 o'clock. Um, I still allow myself, you know, I'm having a, a pop or, or some people call it a soda. Uh, we're having, uh, I'm having a pop. I will still have probably one or two cups of coffee every morning. I have my creamer and my stevia with it. Um, but I think that those are uh, good habits that have all, and they've all kind of fallen under one umbrella. So I have the big, uh, you know, what do I want to do? And then it's allowed me to kind of use the planner and then I kind of honed it in with my morning routine. Then under the eating and exercise part of it, uh, one diff exercise, one hour a day, improve my habit. And then the, the intermittent fasting where I've really kind of honed it into a two meals per day, uh, basically starting around 11 o'clock and usually by seven o'clock I'm done that day. So it's like a 16, eight schedule. Um, and then the last, the fifth and final thing is public accountability. And I'm seeing that unfold in a variety of different ways. Um, the first one is with my wife. Uh, we, we kind of hold each other accountable. We're able to push each other and encourage each other, help each other out with our diets and making sure that we're both getting uh, our exercise in. And then the, the second thing would be uh, an inner small group. And for us, it's a small, smaller group of six people. And what we've uh, been doing is a weekly weigh in every Friday morning. And it's kind of funny. We had, uh, we were at a, uh, a, a small group Bible study the other evening, and this is where the other layer of accountability comes in, uh, being a little more public about it. I, we were, we were there and they had some desserts afterwards. And, the, and, uh, the one of the guy, he's one of the six, him and his wife, uh, they were there 
and he he was having a couple pieces of cake and and uh the pastor's like brand are you gonna have uh, some of the cake i'm like no i i gotta weigh in tomorrow morning and and uh my buddy he he ended up eating some of the cake and uh you know lo and behold the next day he he did not make his weight, uh, but it, it's all right. It's all in good uh, jest. And, and again, we're not saying that we have to be like complete, uh, completely regimented and uh, very strict. But uh, I think the public accountability helped because now some other people who are in that small group are aware that uh, I, I'm weighing in on Friday mornings. I let them know. And it helped me to be strong in the face of, I think it was like an Oreo ice cream cake like really who can pass that up i know i can barely do that but i uh, uh i was able to command the willpower and get through it uh thursday evening so uh it was pretty cool but i also think then to take it to the next level so the the, the layers of accountability i have my wife and i then we have the center smaller group of people and then i you know i'm not afraid to share it so we have some people in small group who are aware of it and then now here publicly i'm putting it out there and I think just uh, putting it out there publicly and making sure that I, I'm not being afraid of it, I'm not going to back down. And hopefully, you can help to hold me accountable to what my goals are. Um, I, you know, in, in in my thought on goals for my weight, they've kind of changed. I used to have it more weight based. Um, I think reading the Future Self Now book, as well as some of these other uh, personal development books. I realize that it's it's not so much the weight that should be the goal. It's the changing of your identity and who you want to become. What are the things that you believe in so strongly that you are willing to completely alter and modify your habits, your daily habits, so that you can accomplish those objectives? If, if it's simply weight-based, once you hit the weight, then you may have a tendency to fall back. But if you're changing your identity and what you believe in about yourself, whether it's, you know, you're going to be a vegetarian, you're going to be an exercise aholic and exercise every single day, whatever it is that you're wanting to believe about yourself, you need to incorporate that as part of your identity on who you are. And once you do that, then you will be able to make those changes and I believe make them stick a lot easier. Again, it's going to be a journey. Those are the five. Uh, I hope hope you enjoyed them and I hope it was beneficial to you. Um, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, I would love if you became a subscriber and hit that subscribe button or even hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, uh, leave them in a the video down below on YouTube and I will... Uh, get back to them. And I hope to see you here in the next video. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And uh, remember, we can do it together. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.